Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! A good friend of mine has about 4 years ago inherited the house of his grandparents. He decided to live there for the time being till he has decided what to do with the house. He grew up in it, so he did not really want to sell it. Not even a week after he moved in, he got a visit from a neighborhood committee. They said they are the three board members of the HOA and are here so he can sign his membership papers. They were extremely nosy and rude, for example, one tried to get into the garage without so much as asking. When he stopped him and asked him where he wanted to go, he had the audacity to say, I need to check your garage to see if everything there is in order. I have a right to do this weekly and denying me access is an offense that will cost a fine. He then had enough of their audacity and kicked him out of the house. While doing so, one of the board members shoved some papers into his face and told him he needed to sign this right now. He would live there a week already and these papers had to be signed before moving in. Once they were gone, he took a look at the papers. They were so ridiculous and gave the HOA rights that were simply unreal. They had, for example, a right to visit your home weekly and check things like if you do not use a garage for storage, if you do not have gasoline and containers in your garage, and same goes for gas. You had to mow your lawn every week, snow had to be shoveled every two hours if it snowed, starting at 5 o'clock in the morning. You could not park more than one car on your grounds, except inside the garage, and a ton of other nonsense. A few days later, they came back and asked him why he did not sign the papers yet. They also wanted to check the garage again, but this time he would not even let them in, and he told them he would never become a member of their stupid club. To them, that meant war. Within a week, they had sent him fines worth of $1,000, several of which were for denying them access to his home, each worth $250. My friend simply did not take them seriously and used their stupid letters to help fire his grill. Then came the day where they went extremely too far. He came back and one of the board members had broken into his garage, stood in it, and was writing things down on his notepad. But that was not even the worst part. He had two wonderful oak trees in the front of the house. They had been planted by his great-grandparents when they were newlyweds and moved into this house. The HOA was in the process of taking them down. They had called a professional crew for this. One was already so damaged, basically all twigs were already down. It was just a stump that was left. The other one they had just started with. And he then lost it. He told the tree crew to stop right now and explain to them that he was the owner and what they did was highly illegal. They had no idea since the board member claimed that these trees were in violation of the rules, since supposedly too many leaves went to the neighbor's garden. He had told them that there was no legal reason to put them down, but the board member claimed that he had given his okay because the trees were in violation of rules of the HOA. He looked it up later and they actually had a bylaw that if a garden produces more than one 40 liter sack of leaves within two weeks, the garden owner needs to take down the offending trees within two weeks. He later called the cops on the board members for trespassing, breaking and entering. They actually had used the bolt cutter to get into the garage. He had it always closed with a big bike clock after they had tried to get in it twice before. The process must have been glorious. Not only did they have to repay him for the lock and the tree, which was worth a ton of money, north of 50k if I remember right, plus damages for the second tree. He had a professional tree person look after it so all the damage healed properly, which alone cost over 1k. But these idiots actually thought the trial would have been unfair. And they tried to fight it, which probably cost them an additional 10 to 15k in lawyers and court costs. All in all, this trial must have cost him over 120k. Then he went to yet another civil court 
and sued him for emotional damage. He told him how much these trees meant to him since his great-grandparents had planted them, the seeds from the home country. He really laid it on as thick as he could. Plus, he felt threatened by the HOA and can hardly sleep because, well, he always fears they will try to get into his house. The court actually bought it and gave him 500k plus the costs for a state or the art alarm system so he can feel safe again in his own home. So, put all together, he cost the HOA nearly 750k. They had to file for bankruptcy and get a person to check the books so my friend will get his money. The best part is the last one though. The mediator found out that these three jerks had been defrauding the HOA for well over 10 years and were giving out as many fines as they possibly could so they could use it to bolster their income. All three had to sell their houses so they could pay out my friend. Now he's for most people one of the favorite people living there and he constantly gets invited over for grilling and whatnot. You see, most people never wanted the HOA in the first place, but the board member practically forced him to sign the contract, claiming it would not be optional. And if they did not sign before moving in, it would be a $500 fine. Only 6 of the over 50 members actually wanted this HOA, and people think they did get part of the action as a reward for spying out their neighbors to find violations. I have the perfect story for you, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Sarah and I'm a college student in my early 20s. I love socializing with people, going out with my friends and doing things that make me happy. But one day, my world was turned upside down by a person who tried to ruin my life. This is my story of how I got my pro revenge. It all started on a sunny day in June when I met this girl named Lisa. We had a mutual friend and hit it off instantly. Lisa and I started hanging out and having a lot of fun. But little did I know that she was jealous of me and she would do anything to bring me down. One day we were all at a party and Lisa overheard me talking about my plans to travel to Europe the following month. She immediately got jealous and started saying how she wished she could afford to travel to. I tried to be sympathetic and suggested that she could save up money and travel someday too. But that wasn't enough for Lisa. She started spreading rumors about me, saying that I was a snob who thought I was better than everyone else because I was going to Europe. I couldn't believe it. I had never said anything like that and I couldn't understand why Lisa was doing this to me. At first I tried to ignore it but the rumors kept spreading and soon everyone in our social circle started to believe them. People started treating me differently and I felt like an outcast. I knew I had to do something so... I confronted Lisa about the rumors. Lisa, I need to talk to you. Why are you spreading these rumors about me? I asked her. What rumors? Lisa said, pretending like she didn't know what I was talking about. You know exactly what I was talking about, Lisa. You've been telling everyone that I'm a snob who thinks she's better than everyone else because I'm going to Europe. I said, feeling angry. Oh, that. Well, it's true, isn't it? Lisa said with a smug look on her face. No, it's not. I never said anything like that. Well, I heard you say it. Lisa said, shrugging her shoulders. That's not true, Lisa. And you know it. Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. I guess I just don't like you. And that's when I knew that Lisa was a toxic person who didn't deserve to be my friend. So I decided to cut ties with her and focus on my own happiness. But Lisa wasn't done with me yet. A few weeks later, I received a text telling me that some purchases were made using my credit card. That was definitely not me. Then I received a message later that day from a mutual friend between me and Lisa that she, Lisa, was behind these shady purchases. Clearly, she had stolen my credit card information and had made several unauthorized purchases with it. I couldn't believe it. How could she do something so despicable? I immediately called my bank and reported the fraud, but I knew I had to take matters into my own hands too. I texted Lisa back and told her that I knew what she had done and that she needed to return my money immediately. You're crazy if you think I'm going to give you any money back. You should have been more careful with your credit card information. 
Lisa texted me back. Of course, she wasn't playing and obvious telling me that so I don't take her text as evidence but she made sure I got her message. I was furious. I couldn't believe that Lisa was trying to turn this around on me. And that's when I decided to get my pro revenge. I went to the police and filed a report against Lisa for credit card fraud. I had saved all of our text messages as evidence and I was sure that justice would be served. But Lisa was clever. She had used a virtual private network, VBN, to hide her location and identity while committing the crime. The police were unable to trace her and the case was closed due to the lack of evidence. But I didn't give up. I knew I had to get creative if I wanted to get my revenge. I started by spreading the word about what Lisa had done. I told all of our mutual friends and acquaintances about the fraud, warning them to be careful around her. I also posted about it on social media, making sure that everyone knew what kind of person Lisa really was. Lisa was furious. She started sending me threatening messages, telling me to stop talking about her. But I didn't back down. I continued to spread the word and soon Lisa's reputation was in shambles. People started avoiding her and she became an outcast, just like I had been. One day I was out shopping with my friends when Lisa spotted me. She stormed up to me. I told you to stop talking about me. She yelled. I have every right to talk about what you did to me. I said calmly. That's it. I've had enough of you. Lisa said before trying to throw hands. But I was ready for her. I knew how to defend myself. I dodged her punch and then kicked her in the stomach. Lisa fell to the ground gasping for air. She tried to get up but I kicked her in the shin making her fall down again, making her fall back down again. I am calling the police, Lisa said, tears streaming down her face. Go ahead, I have nothing to hide. The police arrived and Lisa tried to tell them that I had attacked her for no reason but I had witnesses who had seen her try to punch me first. The police arrested Lisa for assault and battery and she was charged with a misdemeanor. From that day on, Lisa disappeared from my life and I never heard from her again. I had got my pro revenge and I had shown her that I wasn't someone she could mess with. I learned a valuable lesson about toxic people and the importance of standing up for yourself. And now, I'm stronger and more confident than ever before. I woke up one morning to a knock on my door. I groggily stumbled out of bed, rubbed my eyes and answered the door. And to my surprise, I was greeted by a group of people holding clipboards and wearing matching polo shirts. Good morning, ma'am. We are from the Homeowners Association, said the leader of the group, a middle-aged woman with a stern expression. We've received complaints about your yard and we need to have a word with you. My heart sank. I had only moved into the neighborhood a few months ago and I was already getting in trouble with the HOA. I knew they could be strict but I didn't expect him to come knocking on my door before I even finished my morning coffee. Um, okay, come on in, I said, opening the door wider and gesturing for them to enter. The group got into my living room and took a seat on my couch. The leader of the group introduced herself as Karen, a fake name, and proceeded to pull out a stack of papers from her clipboard. Miss Johnson. We have received several complaints about your front yard. It seems you haven't been following the guidelines outlined in our community bylaws. Karen said, I'm sorry, I didn't know there were specific guidelines for my yard. I said, feeling embarrassed. Well, there are. We expect our residents to follow them. She said before launching into a long list of rules and regulations for my yard. From the type of grass I was allowed to plant to the height of my hedges. As she spoke, I couldn't tell but feel like I was being scolded like a child. I had always been a free spirit and the idea of being told what to do with my own property made me feel trapped. I understand the rules but I feel like some of them are a bit excessive. I said, trying to reason with her. I'm sorry you feel that way, Miss Johnson. But these rules are in place to ensure the atheistic integrity of our community. Karen said, not budging an inch. I could tell this conversation was I could tell this conversation wasn't going to go anywhere. So I thanked them for their time and showed them out. 
As I closed the door, I let out a deep sigh. I knew I had to do something about my yard, but I didn't want to confirm to the HOA strict guidelines. I had always been a bit of a rebel. Growing up, I was the type of kid who would dye her hair bright pink and wear mismatched clothes just to stand out. My parents were always supportive of my individuality and they encouraged me to express myself however I wanted. But after my parents passed away when I was 25, I felt lost. They had been my rock and without them I didn't know how to be myself. I bounced around from job to job, never really finding my passion. It wasn't until I moved to this neighborhood that I felt like I could start fresh. As I looked out at my yard, I knew I had a decision to make. I could either confirm to the HOA's rules and regulations or I could stand up for my individuality and do something that felt true to myself. A few weeks went by and I found myself spending every spare moment working on my yard. I planted wild flowers and painted my mailbox bright purple. I even hung a homemade wind chime made out of old spoons and forks on my porch. As I was watering my plants one day, Karen from the HOA came by for an impromptu inspection. She looked around, her eyes scanning every inch of my yard. I could tell she was disapproving of my wild, eclectic style, but I didn't let it bother me. I was proud of my yard, and I wasn't going to let anyone tell me how to express myself. Miss Johnson, I'm afraid your yard is still not up to par with our community standards. Karen said with a condescending tone. I took a deep breath before responding. I understand your concerns, Karen, but I believe that everyone should have the freedom to express themselves, even if it doesn't fit into a strict set of guidelines. She scoffed. Well, that may be true, but not in this community. We have a certain standard to uphold. We can't have residents flaunting the rules. I could feel my blood boiling. Who was she to tell me how to live my life? I knew I had to stand up for myself. Karen, I appreciate your position, but I am not willing to sacrifice my individuality for the sake of conformity. I am willing to work with the HOA to find a compromise that works for everyone, but I will not change who I am to fit into a mold. Karen looked taken aback, clearly not used to residents pushing back against the HOA's authority. She took a moment to compose herself before responding. Very well, Miss Johnson. We will take your request into consideration, but I can't make any promises. Karen said before turning and walking away. I stood there for a moment, feeling a mix of pride and anxiety. I had stood up for myself, but I didn't know how the HOA would react. Over the next few weeks, I waited anxiously for the HOA's response. I continued to work on my yard, adding more flowers and even putting up a small birdhouse. I felt like I was creating a space that reflected who I was, and I wasn't willing to give that up. One day I received a letter from the HOA, and I hesitated before opening it, unsure of what it would say. But when I read the contents, I felt a rush of relief. The letter stated that the HOA had reviewed my request and had decided to make an exception for my yard. They acknowledged that while my yard didn't fit into their strict guidelines, it added to the community's diversity and character. I couldn't believe it. I had stood up for myself and it had paid off. I felt like I could finally breathe, knowing that I could be myself in my own home. As I sat in my yard taking in the beauty of my wild flowers and the sound of my homemade wind chime, I felt like I had finally found my place in the world. I knew that I would always be a bit of a rebel, but that was okay. I had learned that it was possible to be true to yourself while still being a part of a community. From that day on, I continued to live in my own unique way, but I also found ways to connect with my neighbors. I hosted a plug party and everyone loved my homemade guacamole. I even joined the HOA's gardening club where I shared my love of wild flowers with others. I realized that even though I had once felt like an outsider in this community, I had found a way to make it my own. And that was something worth celebrating. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.